Welcome to another edition of Husker Huddle presented by Sat Brothers. I'm your host, Jeremiah Searles. Today we are joined by Husker Blackshirt, current Dallas Cowboy, Lincoln native, Luke Gifford. Luke, Luke how are you doing, my friend? I'm good, man. How are you? Oh, hanging in there. Luke, what have you been up to these last uh, couple weeks here as we're supposed to be in OTAs for you and the gang here, but we're sitting here in Lincoln trying to figure out when the world's going to open back up. Uh, how have you been managing yeah. all this? It's been good, man. You know, it's obviously um, – Kind of frustrating you'd like to be back at work and getting after it but just been kind of laying low and uh working out what i can um we've been there's been a few of us that have been over here at uh slats chris slats working out and trying to just stay after it and be ready to roll when we can so yeah man it's it's different um not really what you would expect but we're trying to take advantage of the time we have Luke, we haven't caught up with you here at the Sports Network in a while, so I want to I want to walk it back all the way to last year. You get undrafted free agent to the Cowboys this time last year. You go through making the active roster, getting put on IR, kind of a whole emotion of roller coaster, which is the NFL, and it's not going to get any easier than you know that. But talk to us a little bit about what rookie year was like for you in the NFL and kind of what you took away from it as you head into year two. Yeah, man, um, I really enjoyed my last year. Obviously, I had a lot of ups and downs just with injuries and stuff like that, but um, it was definitely a big learning process. You know, your rookie year is a long year. You go through the draft process, um, mini camp, OTAs, then training camp and preseason. And, you know, you're taking a lot of a lot of reps in preseason. So to take all those reps in preseason and then go into the to the full season, it's um, it's a long year. Um, it's a lot of work and it's something to get used to. But. I'm excited for it. I think, you know, the biggest thing is, is just learn how to take care of your body and mm -hmm. take care of the weekly grind of the NFL. It's a tough game, obviously. And then to add, you know, whatever it is, like six more weeks um, than you're used to in college and then plus the playoffs, it's it's a lot, man. So just learn how to take care of yourself and, and how to manage your time week to week is super important. I know I know. when I was a rookie, I tried to find vets to latch on to because the faster you can learn that, the longer your, car your career will continue. Who are some guys down there in Dallas that maybe you latched on to or took tidbits of advice to start learning how to take care of your body and how to eat right and prepare and watch film and do yeah. all that? Were there some veterans down there that took you, uh, took you under their wing? For sure. Um, we have a lot of good guys in our room. You know, Sean Lee, uh, Jalen Smith, Lane Van Der Esch. Um, all three of those guys have been great to learn from. Um, you know, especially Sean, I sit and listen to Sean in meetings and try and pick up everything I can from him because, you know, him, he's, he's been along, around for a long time and he's a really smart guy and, and he's just a, the ultimate pro, you know, he, he knows how to take care of his body. He's been through a lot of injuries. So just kind of seeing how he does things week to week and the amount of work he puts in during the week with film and, and the things that he eats is pretty impressive. So yeah, I tried to take as much as I can from those guys and kind of work it into, to my habits. Absolutely. I mean, you, you mentioned it as a rookie. You take so many reps from OTAs and a training camp and all of that. Let's talk a little bit about how different this year is going to be for some of those rookies. I want you to go back in time a year from now and think about what NFL life would be like for you if you missed all of OTAs and your first NFL experience was walking onto training camp field. I mean, yeah, you're man. already eyes are opened as it is, but imagine not having that and then just going right into that. Talk to people here and tell them a little bit about how big spring is for a rookie just to get their feet wet a little bit before actual training camp hits. Yeah, it's huge, you know, because um, OTAs and minicamp is really when those young guys get to get some reps. And, um, you know, I can't really imagine not having any rolling into training camp. I, I finally was starting to feel a little more comfortable with the playbook by the time we got to training camp. But without those reps in the spring, uh, it would have made it really hard to be where I was at. Um, you know, when you get to training camp, a lot of the times you got to get your, your ones and your twos ready to roll. Um, that's what's most important. So those guys are going to get a lot of the reps, and, and you got to take advantage of the reps that you can get. So it's it's tough, man. I, I know it's going to be different for those guys. And as vets, it will be important for us to really help them out and and be, be there for them when you can. But, yeah, I can't imagine not getting the reps in the spring. Um, that's, that's really where I made most of my strides so that I was ready to roll for training camp. Yeah, I mean, I don't think people understand. You're going to see a record low of undrafted free agents make NFL rosters this year, in my yeah. opinion. And you're going to see even less rookies produce on the field this year. Strictly based off of that fact alone, the, the ability to pick up a playbook like that takes a lot of time. And Luke, yeah. I mean, you're a smart guy. You play in a lot of different schemes here. NFL playbooks are a different animal than what they were in college. Yeah, for sure. I mean, and, and it's just the way that, that it's taught, too. You know, you're, you're pretty much – 
pretty much on your own. You get some help and you can go in for extra, but um, they give you an iPad and you're expected to learn it. So, and then when you get your number called and, and you get a play or a rep, you got to know what's going on. So it's, it's a whole different ball game and, and there's just a lot of different schemes and systems, you know, so if, if you're not, you're not going to be used to everything. There's, there's always going to be stuff that you haven't seen and, and it's definitely going to take, take some time to get used to. Again, we have Luke Gifford here on Husker Huddle presented by Sap Brothers. We want to thank Sap Brothers for sponsoring Husker Huddle, and they want to remind you that their top priority is to keep guests and teammates safe. Sap Brothers is offering full service at the pump as our nation relies on drivers and farmers now more than ever to provide essentials to our communities. Sap Brothers is committed to you. Luke, a lot going on in the world right now, a lot starting to open up, a lot to shut down. How are OTAs being handled by the Dallas Cowboys right now? I know everyone's doing virtual OTAs, but everyone's doing them a little different. How are the Cowboys handling this, and how are you being um, – how is it working for you? Do you like it? Do you dislike it? I mean, obviously, I know you'd rather be there, but how are you uh, acclimating to these virtual OTAs? Yeah, you know, um, we've been having meetings throughout the week, um, just a couple-hour blocks here and there. Um, so th it's been it's been good. We've gotten a lot done, you know, and for us, we have new coaching staff and a new system. So uh, we have a lot more learning than probably a lot of other teams do. Mm -hmm. um, so we've been trying to take advantage of the time we can get, you know, obviously, usually you can only have one guy talking um, during those meetings because you can't hear anything. But we try to interact as much as we can and, and try to learn in some proactive ways. But yeah, you know, it's really all we can do right now. We're just trying to take care of what we can control. And um, right now we're just trying to get that, that new playbook installed so that when we get there and whenever that may be, we're ready to roll and can, can get out there and run some stuff. Absolutely. I think that the, the teams that are going to do really well this year are going to be the teams that can adapt the best. And um, yeah. I feel for you guys having a new coach, new scheme. And, I mean, even veterans are going to struggle for trying to pick up those playbooks. But it gives guys like yourself and guys that are smart kind of a level playing field where it doesn't matter if you're drafted, undrafted, year two, year seven. When you show up to training camp, it's going to be a pretty clean slate. And I think that that gives you a really a good opportunity um, to make strides on this team there for you, Luke. Yeah, for sure. You know, I think that's that's one of the things that I kind of have to capitalize on. You know, the situation, while it's not ideal, um, I can definitely make some strides. And, and I feel like if I'm ready to roll when I get there for training camp, then um, I'll kind of have a step up. Uh, you know, I think as a group, we're kind of unique. We have a really good group of linebackers and um, just a really good group of smart guys. Um, so I think we'll really benefit, of it, benefit from it. And I know we've talked about it as a group that if we can really um, – just kind of take care of, of what we can right now that we feel like we can have an advantage rolling into the season. Absolutely. Luke, before we move on to some uh, Husker talk here, what are some goals for you going into year two here as a Dallas Cowboy? You know, I think I just want to really solidify myself. Um, I want to help the team in whatever way I can. I know the special teams will always be big for me. Um, so really just be a core guy, you know, all four special teams. And then when my number's called on defense, be ready to roll. You know, there's always going to be guys coming in and out with injuries and different opportunities popping up. So when I get my shot, I just want to be ready to, to go out there and help the team and, and, and just use that opportunity, you know, just make sure that when my number's called, I'm ready. Absolutely. All right, we're going to shift gears here a little bit. NFL draft just happened here. We had two key guys go, and Khalil and Carlos David drafted. We had Darian Daniels go as an undrafted free agent. We had uh, Lamar Jackson go as an undrafted free agent. You got to play with three of the four of these guys. Talk a little bit about these two guys, especially these two guys up front, and what yeah. they've been through, what they've put in, and how happy you were to see them get their names called the other night. Man, I was super happy for, for all those guys, you know, but Carlos and Khalil, for them to both get drafted and go through, through the things that they've gone through, all the position changes, the coaching changes, scheme changes. Um, it's pretty cool, man. They're both really good dudes, and they're just super explosive athletes. You know, I think – um, I've known since they were young dudes that that they would end up being drafted someday and, and be in the league. So it's not surprising to anyone that's been around them. But, yeah, I'm super happy for those guys. And then the guys that went un undrafted, you know, I know especially um, Lamar and Darian and, and Mo too, um, all felt like they had a chance to get drafted. And and I know how that goes. You know, it's not a good feeling. But at the end of the day, it's all, all what you do with the opportunity that you get. And, I think all those guys understand that, and, and they're hard workers, so they'll take advantage of the opportunity that they have. So, you know, I'm still excited for them. At the end of the day, um, whether you're drafted late or you're a free agent, you're still going to have to go in there and make plays and prove yourself. So they're going to get the same opportunity that a lot of guys do. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I love seeing Huskers get called in the draft again. Luke, 
we got a bunch of a uh, bunch of things going on here in Lincoln, but football is not one of them at the moment, and it's a question mark if it's going to even happen this fall. But a lot of a lot of a lot of questions for this Scott Frost team going into year three, and there's going to be a lot of people asking for answers. And I don't know if it's going to be fair to ask for answers having such a young team with no no spring. But when you look at this roster on offense and defense, what are some positions that you really like? and you think are really primed, ready to go, and what are some positions where you're a little nervous, a little scared to see who's going to step up and take over those roles, like for Carlos and Khalil? Right. Yeah, you know, I think um, defensively, I know a little, little bit more about that side of the ball, but like you said, the defensive line is definitely going to be somewhere where, where some guys are going to have to step up and, and grow into a new role, you know, some young guys for sure. And then I think outside backer, you know, um, there's got to be a pass rush coming from somewhere, and I think outside backer is one of those places that – in this defense, um, for you to be really successful, you got to have something from from the outside backer. So, you know, it'll be interesting to see who steps up there. And then, um, you know, some good parts with the defense. I think the secondary will be really good. Mm -hmm. And then I think Colin and, and Will Honus inside will be really solid. They're good players. So, you know, I think I think um, there's definitely room for growth, um, but they do have some solid places. And and I feel like there's guys on the roster that can make some jumps. You know, they just got to put it together. It's obviously hard without having a spring ball. Um, so that hurts, but if they can take advantage of the reps they get in training camp or fall camp and, and find some stuff there on the D-line and, and a couple guys at outside backer, I think the defense could be really good. Correct me if I'm wrong, but we have another Gifford brother entering the Husker program, correct? Yeah, we do. How excited is he? He's super, he's super pumped. I'm excited for him. I'm, uh, he's, uh, he's actually just coming off his shoulder surgery, so he's, okay. he's about to get cleared here pretty soon, I think. But um, I'm excited to be able to watch him. It'll be fun to have him down there. Absolutely. All right, Luke, I appreciate your time, man. That wraps it up for this edition of Husker Huddle again, presented by Sap Brothers. And we look forward to seeing how you're going to do in the NFL this year, whenever that gets started. We appreciate you catching back up for us, and we'll see you soon, my friend. Yes, sir. Appreciate it, man. All right, brother. Take care of yourself. You too.